Welcome back, Chargers. We hope you had a wonderful break. I'm Sarah Asmussen. And I'm Lizette Mosqueda. Here on the April 4, 2016 installment of DP News, we'll be bringing you news on... Research opportunity. Community service. The DP Write-a-thon. And more. Time to get back into school spirit, Chargers, because you're watching... DP, DP News. News. Looking to splash around or save lives this summer? The city of Santa Barbara is looking for friendly, hardworking pool lifeguards with a positive attitude to join the <coughs> summer 2016 team. You must be 15 years old or older by May 10, 2016 and must be available for the training dates from May 13th through 15th. If offered a position, you must also be available for the staff training starting from June 9th through the 11th. No experience is necessary to apply. All required training will be provided for only $90. Check out the application for more info and email Aquatics Coordinator Amber Workman at aworkman at santabarbaraca.gov to sign up for an interview and swim test day and time. UCSB postdoctoral researcher Logan Fiorola is looking for high school students at any grade level to participate in a study conducted by researchers at UCSB testing the effects of playing educational games on cognitive skills. This study requires 30 to 60 minutes of your time per week over the course of four weeks. The entire study can be completed online, and students who complete all four sessions of the study will receive $30 for participating. If you are interested in participating in this study, or if you would like more information, please contact Dr. Logan Fiorella at fiorella at psych.ucsb.edu. On that note, if you are interested in psychology, you might want to consider taking Mr. Aller's awesome AP Psychology class next year. Here's another video on keeping our campus clean. Seniors, we only have nine weeks and two days left before graduation. But before we can get excited about senior activities and grad night, community service hours required for graduation are due on May 20th. And hours for the 200 plus hours award are due on April 27th. If you're curious in knowing how many hours you've completed, please stop by the Career Center. If you are a little behind on reaching the required 60 hours for graduation, or just shy of 200 hours, have no fear, the DP Community Service Fair is here! On Tuesday, April 19th, the DP Career Center staff, along with Partners in Education, will be hosting a community service fair in the quad outside of the cafeteria. Nonprofit organizations from across Santa Barbara County have been invited to come out and share with DP students the different volunteer opportunities that are available at their organizations. This is a great chance to see the many different ways students can fulfill the required 60 hours of community service before the end of the school year. The fair will be held during fourth period and lunchtime. Teachers, you are encouraged to bring your students out to see the tables before the lunchtime rush. Especially if they're serving pizza that day. Can't wait to see you there. The Santa Barbara Central Library is seeking volunteers for Youth Services Homework Help Program. Teens interested in helping elementary school students with reading and homework will need to attend a one and a half hour training to prepare for this opportunity. Trainings are scheduled for Saturday, March 19th from 1 to 2.30 p.m. and Saturday, April 9th from 1 to 2.30 p.m. The training will take place in the island room of the Santa Barbara Central Library. Volunteers will be expected to assist with children's reading and or homework. Commit to volunteer two to four hours a week. Sign up for a shift between 3.30 to 6.30 p.m. on Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays or Thursdays, or 2.30 to 6.30 p.m. on Wednesdays. And teens must be at least a sophomore in high school, maintain a B GPA or above, and provide a letter of recommendation from a teacher. 
To sign up for a training, please call the Santa Barbara Central Library. This week is Committed Week. This week promotes positive, healthy lifestyle for Santa Barbara County teens. One free of drugs and alcohol. Join Friday Night Live and the leadership class on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday during lunchtime for some fun activities and to take the committed pledge. The first annual DP Write-A-Thon is taking place this Wednesday, April 6th from 3 to 4.45 in the DP Library. There is still time to sign up. Just Google DP Writing Center, click on the Write-A-Thon link, and fill out the form under Participate. Remember that participants will have the chance to win prizes and be published in the local color student art magazine. That's all for your Campus News Today, DP. We hope adjusting back to the flow of school isn't too hard after a nice break. See you tomorrow, DP. Now over to... Jeffrey with your sports report. Thank you, Lizanne and Sarah. I'm Jeffrey Chow and I'm here with your sports report. With school not happening because of spring break this week, Last week, not many sports competed over the break. Track and field took part in the Easter Relays at City College on the starting Saturday of spring break, and also on the same day, softball had an alumni game. Baseball, however, played rough four games this weekend in San Luis Obispo tournament and went undefeated for the opening day of the tournament last Wednesday. Our boys traveled to Morro Bay to face the Pirates, with Kevin Barker taking the mound for five innings and only allowing two runs and Josh Feldhaus leading the offense going four and four with, the home run, with a home run and Dustin Demeter going three and five and Gio Macias going four, three and four at the plate. Our boys won their seventh straight game of the season beating Morro Bay nine to seven. Then on the same day, our boys made that seventh streak to eight when they beat Golden Valley 11 to 33 for their second game of the tournament. Dylan Kelly began on the mound and went four innings and only allowing three runs Peter Apple finished the game, pitching three hitless innings in relief, striking out six batters to earn the save. The second day of the tournament, our boys made that streak from eight to nine when they beat Marantha High School five to four on the third for the third game of the tournament. Austin Bold, the usual closer, closer, emerged for his first varsity start, pitching five innings and giving up two earned runs while striking out two batters to earn the win. Gio Macias pitched two innings of scoreless relief, striking out two for the save, and clutch hitting from DJ Sharp and Dustin Demeter helped with the win. And guess what? Our boys did it again. Yes, they made that streak from 9 to 10, making baseball finish undefeated at slow tournament with a diving catch to end the game. From Quinn Peacock, they defeated top-ranked Oaks Christian 7-3 for the fourth and final game of the tournament. Darby Naughton pitched a complete game, striking out 10 batters on only allowing two earned runs. Quinn Peacock and Dustin Demeter both went 2-4 and four at the plate, and Peter Apple went 2-3 and three with a walk. Baseball is now 11-3 on, se on the season, and they play a doubleheader against Oxnard at home tomorrow. Just a side note for my girls' basketball team, Camila Casanueva earned an All-CIF team honors after averaging 14.6 points and a 6.1 assist per game to lead the girls' team to a 17-7 record. That's amazing. Well, that's all for your sports report, DP. Now over to Ann with your current events. According to NewsHawk, Saturday's Deltopia event went smoothly with only 45 arrests and 48 citations by 8 p.m. with roughly 3,500 attendees. Last year, there were 10,000 attendees, over 100 arrests, and 140 citations by 11 p.m. According to Santa Barbara County Sheriff's Department spokeswoman Kelly Hoover, the number one reason why this event was so successful was that the fact that the students did not encourage out-of-towners to attend, did not advertise on social media, or invite and hype this event. On another note, California lawmakers recently approved a minimum wage increase to $15, which takes a place by 2022. The change begins on January 1st by a boost of 50 cents, but businessmen, businesses with 25 or less employees will have a year to adjust, as stated by KUIT. So if a student works 20 hours a week with the current minimum wage, they're making $200. But with the minimum wage increase, they'd be making $300 a week, a $100 difference. 
That wraps it up for today, Chargers. I'm Ann Bailey, sending it over to Mr. Luna with the weather. Hey, DP. I'm Mr. Luna of the YSSCR DP, and I'm here to talk about Community Week. Uh, the Community Week community campaign is put on by Friday Night Live with the help of leadership, and it's meant to promote healthy lifestyles and just a positive, healthy, grab a wristband and just commit to a healthy, positive lifestyle, uh, have some fun in the Greek, and um, just um, have a good time this weekend. Join Friday Night Live in leadership today um, in the Greek. Also, um, wear teal on Wednesday to support positive lifestyles and um, a life without drugs and alcohol. So now over to Nandini with the weather. Hey DP, I'm Nandini Braganza, your weather reporter for today. Today's high is 75 and low is 56. Tomorrow heats up with a high of 80 and a low of 57. Today's surf is 3 to 4 feet. And that's all for your weather, DP. See you later. <laughs>